So this one is the, the least bright. I'm not surprised at all. So that's, that's my best buy right here. That's my recommendation. Well, hi everyone. You've guessed it by now. We are testing lights today. And uh, I've got seven of them right in front of me right here. And we're going to put them to the test. Everybody says that you need to have these lights visible from three statute miles, right? When you fly at night. And so we're going to find out if this is true or not. Um, I can tell you already, I've tested these a little bit in the studio just to take a look at them. And um, I don't have full faith on all of them. So what I did is I actually went on Amazon. I typed strobe lights for drones and I bought every one that I could find. With that being said, all of these, I want to be clear, I've paid with our own money, with Pilot Institute money. This is not something that is being sponsored by anyone. Um, I've got nothing to lie for here. Uh, if these don't work, I'm going to tell you they don't work and it's going to be pretty simple. So uh, we're going to get started. What we're going to do is um, these these lights, they, ch they, they have a wide range, quite frankly. They range from two LEDs on top of them, like this tiny little one right here has two LEDs to some that have six LEDs, now, surprisingly from the same brand, actually. Um, some are very lightweight, five grams. Some are 17 grams, a little bit larger. 17 grams is nothing, still not enough weight that you have to worry about it. Weight is really not part of the equation right here. Not something that we're going to really have to worry about. Uh, pricing, $24.99 is the cheapest one. And then the most expensive one, which actually is no longer made, uh, $59.99 on their website. Uh, this one uh, is really bright. Actually, this one came with my Inspire 2 when I bought it. And, uh, and it's actually one of my favorite lights, uh, just because I can put that on and actually see the drone better during the day. It helped me to, to better spot it. Uh, this comes in a package of two. We're only going to test it with one, but it does with, come with a package of two, which is cool because you can put one on each leg of the Inspire, for example, if you have a larger drone. So uh, that's a, already a good one. And so we're basically going to check if they're visible from three statute miles or not. And, uh, and we're going to do this at night. So uh, we're going to head out. We're going to go. We have the perfect spot that we found here in Prescott. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have a team on top of a parking garage right here in downtown Prescott. And then we're going to be flying close to an area called Thumb Butte. Thumb Butte is actually not far from my house. It's this cool um, Butte. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. And uh, we're going to be flying. There's a little park right here. That's exactly three statute miles, three miles from uh, as the crow flies, as we say, right, uh, from, a, from a direct uh, distance. So uh, we'll be taking off with the drone. We're going to be putting the lights right in front of the drone. And then we're going to see what happens. So before we get into the detail of each of these right here, I want to do a little quick recap of the regulation. Starting March 16 of 2021, you will have to have a light. Now you already do. If you're flying at night, you're flying as a waiver and it's before March 16, whenever you see this, you always needed to have one of these lights at night or even during evening civil twilight or, even, or morning civil twilight. So with that being said, the regulation on March 16 of 2021 has changed and now you have to uh, complete training on the FA website. You can go on fasafety.gov. If you took your test before March 16 of 2021 and you have to go out there, you have to do the free training. It should be pretty quick. You get a certificate at the end and you no longer need a waiver to fly at night, which is cool. And, uh, and then you're ready to go as long as you put these lights on there. So this is the reason why we're testing all of this. If you took your exam, your initial exam after March 16 of 2021, you're good to go. You don't need to do the FAA training because you received the training uh, when you did your training to get your certificate. So with that being said, let's take a look at all of these. Let's see how they kind of look, the details about them, and then we'll go on the field and we'll go test them. The first one right here is the Loom Cube Strobe. Now this one is $39.99. Um, this is gonna be four LEDs. You can see the four LEDs. This has a cool little package around it. Um, it, um, it has a strobe mode, a flash mode, and a steady mode that you can have depending on how you tap. You have to press and hold to start it. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to blind you or myself. <laughs> I've done enough of that in the last couple of days. Uh, this one, you can actually do different colors if you use these little clips right here. So you have a red clip. It comes with a green clip as well. We are also going to test this and make sure that these colors, if this is visible from three statute miles, we're actually going to put the clip on it and then see if our team can see it from three statute miles. So uh, this one has 
a micro USB located right in the back right here that you can use to uh, to charge. And uh, we're gonna be charging this and uh, making sure that it's full. It's 11 grams, so pretty, pretty lightweight. Uh, the claiming runtime is six hours. Plenty of, plenty enough to do what you have to do with your drone. And uh, like I said, this is gonna be $39.95 on their website. The next one is the Firehouse Arc 2. Now this comes as a pair, I've mentioned this before. Uh, we have five LEDs, uh, four LEDs, I'm sorry, four LEDs on each of them. And uh, we don't have the ability to do different colors. This one is gonna come in in just white. Now with that being said, you can actually purchase them in different colors, but then you're gonna be stuck with whatever color you buy. Uh, this has a micro USB right here on the side that you can use, seven gram, very lightweight. Now you may be using two of these, so 14 grams, still extremely lightweight. Like I said, the weight is really not an issue here. Uh, in terms of runtime, unknown, uh, it's not on their website, and, uh, and I haven't quite frankly tested it, but I've been using these for a while and I've never had issues uh, on the shoot even during the day uh, with them running out of time. Now these are more expensive, $59.99, but they don't really make them anymore on the Firehouse um, website. What we do have instead is the new one, which is the five. I'll talk about this one last, because, well, I think this is a, a good contender for being the top one. Um, something that you'll find on Amazon is this one. This is the Top Sun Cree. Uh, the, the names are just kind of odd. This has five LEDs right here in the middle. Uh, it has a strobe mode, and that's it. You're just gonna turn it on, it's just gonna strobe. Uh, no multicolor. This is just a white color right here. It's a very simple button. Uh, you just go on the side right here and then it turns on and it turns off. Uh, this has USB-C compared to the uh, the micro, actually, no, you know what, I'm lying that I'm looking at it. It's actually a micro USB as well. Five gram, very, very lightweight on this one. Three hour of runtime and uh, $30 for the, the price tag on Amazon. So that's another contender right here that we have. Then we have the Sam Brain right here, which is a top sun as well. This one doesn't have, really have a name. I'm gonna call it the dome because it has this little dome right here. Uh, it also kind of looks like a, an iPod shuffle. If you get ever had a, an iPod shuffle, it clips on your, uh, it can clip on the belt or whatever it is right here. Now I put Velcro on top of it so we can test it. Uh, this one doesn't have any multicolor. It's all also just on off. It will only, oops, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it will only basically just do the strobe uh, in this case. No multicolor, I said that. 17 grams, a little bit on the on the, heavy, on the heavier side, but again, that doesn't really matter. Uh, three hours of runtime and uh, 29.79, so right around the $30 price range. And then we have two of them, two of them from the same brand called Ulanzi. You'll see them on Amazon. This one is called a DR01. Um, this one has six light. This is the one that has the most LEDs of all of them, uh, the only one. Uh, it has uh, three modes. You have a steady, a strobe, and a flashing mode. And this actually can do also green and red in all three of these modes. So as you push the button right here, it's actually going to cy cycle through the steady, strobe, and flash. And then it's gonna go to red, steady, strobe, and flash, and then the green and do the same thing. So you've got technically nine different modes as you push the button that's located right here uh, in the back. This is USB-C, this one is really well sealed. Uh, some of the other ones, like uh, the this one, the third one I showed you, very open to the element. Uh, I doubt it's gonna last very long. Uh, the, the Firehouse has a nice little plastic all around it, so that makes it a little bit more protected. But this one has a full, uh, full box, basically, uh, and uh, fully protected. So, uh, 15 grams for this one. We've got about 20 hours, they say, of runtime if it's flashing and two hours in continuous mode. So uh, this one, right around $30, $28.96, weird pricing. Uh, but yeah, 20, almost uh, $29. And uh, like, like I said, they're pretty much all around the $30 except the, the ARC 2. Uh, the next one in my list is also from Yulanzi. This is the DR02. Uh, it has a higher number, uh, number two, I think, because it only has two strobe lights on the top right here. This one has two modes, the strobe and the flash, and it has the ability to do white, red, and green uh, as well, just like uh, just like the one from the same brand before. Uh, this has a USB-C, this has a little, uh, there's no, uh, protection, I would say, for the USB-C cable. Not that you're gonna fly this at, uh, in the rain anyway, but six grams, very lightweight, and uh, eight hours of runtime. And this one was the cheapest, $24.95. Uh, my guess is that you would put this on the legs of the drone to just be more visible, kind of like a, an additional light, not as your main light, but we'll find out if it actually works uh, in uh, from three statute miles. 
And then the last one is, uh, this one personally is my favorite just because of the way it's built. If you look at it, it's, it's built nicely. Uh, this is Firehouse Arc 5, uh, five strobe lights on top. It has a strobe and a flash mode. It doesn't have red, it doesn't have green, but it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, it also have a steady mode and a mix mode. So this has actually four different modes, strobe, flash, steady, and then you can do a mix uh, of, uh, of strobe and flash. Um, this one, like I said, no colors. This has a micro USB that's uh, protected on this side right here. Four and a half hours of runtime, and uh, the price on this one is $34, slightly over 30. Quite frankly, it's $4 more than some of these. Uh, I need to mention that the, the Firehouse is made in the USA. This is the only one along with the same brand right here. These two uh, with kind of the red circuitry in the back, uh, these are made in the US. So uh, that's a positive as we all know. So how are we going to test all of this? Well, we're gonna take our trusty, uh, the Zoom, this is the Zoom, and uh, I put a Velcro on the front right here. Now you're gonna say, Greg, are we supposed to put this on top of the drone? Yes, you are. But uh, when the testing is being done, technically the testing needs to be done when the uh, the light is flashing directly at the person looking. So we're gonna take these, we're gonna put them right here, and we're gonna make them visible uh, so that our observers can see them. That will, pass the test or not if you want for three statute miles. If it passes the test, if this is visible from three statute miles, then what we're gonna do is we are going to put them on the top. And when we put them on the top, we're gonna to see if they are also visible. Although the requirement, now you need to remember the requirement, this is not so that you can see the drone. This is so that others that are flying in their manned aircraft can actually see your drone. This is an anti-collision light. This is not a light so you can find where the drone is located. So if it is visible also from the ground, then that much better. That's an extra, but it's definitely not a requirement. So what we're really testing is this distance from three statute miles right here to make sure that it actually works. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna have our team three statute miles away. Don and I, we're gonna be on the ground flipping these things. Uh, it's middle of winter, so it's actually pretty cold out there. So I uh, hope we get extra bonus point for that. Um, and then, we're gonna go up, we're gonna be on the phone with them and making sure that they can see it. If they can see it, they're gonna tell us how they feel. And then uh, we picked a clear night. Now this is very not very difficult around here. We don't have a whole lot of moisture in Arizona where I live, so uh, the visibility is going to be perfect. 10 statute mile, I, I actually, we're going this afternoon. I checked the NOTAM, uh, I checked the METAR, I checked the TAF, everything looks good. Um, and so uh, we're gonna go out and then make sure that everything is visible and then uh, we'll give you guys our opinion. So. What do you say? Let's get to it. All right, let's get to it. So we're gonna tape them right here. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And then I have more batteries in here. So I have one, two. I'm gonna leave them in, in this box here so you can see them. The last one has a Velcro on top of it because if everything goes well, because now we're testing them to be in the front like yeah, this. You're gonna test the top? If we're gonna test on top. Yes. And then these are all the lights. A little treasure chest. <laughs> Bam, this is on 100%. Okay, all right, Donny boy. Make sure it's kind of secure, although these are fairly cheap. Okay, ready? Yep. Oh, wow. Is that a good, uh, is that a good height or should I go higher for future ones? You I'm just going to follow the blink timing so that I know that I'm looking at the right thing because you guys are still well below the horizon. Ready? Okay, I'm going to go, I'm at 200 feet, I'm going to go 300. All right. Okay. Is, is 300 a good altitude for the other ones? Like in case you couldn't see it, yeah? Yes, 300 is a good altitude. All right, coming down. Okay. Yep, put the green one, put the green one on there. Spooling. Taking off. 100. 100 feet. Awesome. Well, that's easy. Uh, the green was a little bit more difficult to see than the white light, but it still came out almost immediately. As soon as I think it cleared the trees and any obstacles in the way, it was visible. <laughs> okay, coming right, down. Coming back down. We're going to do the red one. Red test. So let us know when you see it. Yep, I see it. Okay, is it dimmer or brighter than the green? It is significantly dimmer than both the other ones. Okay. That, that is like just, it's just a barely, it, and 
I might not be able to see it if I didn't know where I was looking. Okay. Um, okay. So we're yeah. coming down, and we're going to switch out a light now. So that one was significantly harder to see than the other two, and I would not have been able to see it if I didn't know exactly where to look. If I was looking at just the horizon looking for an aircraft, then yeah, I couldn't for see sure. it. So this is light number two. This is the arc. This is the arc. This one, actually, I think might be the brightest one of all of them, but from my, from my lab test, it is the brightest. All right, okay. spooling. So you should be able to see it right away. 150. Actually, Jason, let's do a test. I'm gonna start uh, to yaw to the right, and you tell me if you lose sight of it. Okay, significantly dimmer. It's a smaller, uh, like, flash footprint, if you will. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at 90 degrees now. Still make it out, um, and it's still fairly bright. I don't see it anymore. Now we're 180 degrees, so we're, we're in reverse. So yeah, you don't see it? No, I do not see it. See it. No, you should see, you should see some of it now. Is it coming back? Negative, I don't see it. Keep looking. Yeah, now, now I do. Uh, now yeah. I do. Okay. 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 Right. That makes Perfect. sense. So right around 80 degrees, I think, it starts to be real dim. To be dim. Which okay. makes sense. Yeah, totally. I would have been impressed if you could see it from from behind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as Greg was saying, I think once it got to between 80 and 90 degrees, I don't don't think it was visible anymore. At least if it was visible, visible then the, uh, the problems that the eye has at night were definitely kicking in and it was just getting blacked out for me. This one was the cheapest built. All right, spooling. Okay. 100, 150. They should see it. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see it. There's a How much is that slower compared one. to the last one you just saw? Um, it, I mean, it, they're both visible. It's... Uh, the previous two were definitely brighter. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this, that's... Is, this is like 70% as bright as the last one? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's, that's about right. That's, okay. That's what I would have expected. Pattern is easier to pick up, but I think that if it was not... Because it's a double blink. This yeah. one is a double blink. Double blink. Oh, that's the dome. That so one. that's the same brand as the one we just tested. Well, I don't know if it's the same light, but it's it's the same brand. 100, 160, they should see it by now. 160, you see it? Oh, yeah, we see it. Yep, um, I see it. Is that brighter yeah. or dimmer than the last one? It's about the same. Um, I, yeah, I wouldn't say that there is a, a, a noticeable difference. Okay. So, so it seems like number two so far is the winner as far as brightness. Yeah, number one and number two were both pretty. Okay. Pretty similar. Okay. okay. That's good. That guy was about as bright as the previous one. It's, it's the same brand, but a different uh, cap. It seems like on the uh, on the actual light. That was four. This one has different colors, so if it's damn, they're all gonna pass. Press, release, press, and hold. <laughs> There, go. there we go. That one doesn't seem as bright. Yeah, this one doesn't seem as bright, but we're going up now. Okay. Oh yeah, it's definitely not as bright from no, down definitely. here. This one's more of a yellow. Just barely visible. Oh. Like, if you if you stare at it, you lose. So this one is the, the least bright? Yes, it's so far by, by far, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, we can tell from the ground here. Yeah, for definitely sure. Definitely not nearly as bright. I, I don't even think I'm going to test this one with different colors. Well, actually, no, you know what? Well, they got binoculars. No, no, I, I, I want to see actually if you put it in green, maybe it's not visible. That might be our first test that shows a non-visible light. So now we're going up with the same light, but in case this one's green. Okay. 150. It's, it's dimmer than previous. I can see it, but it's not. I mean, it's... I it's, can barely see it's it. It's almost something that I'm not sure if my mind is playing tricks on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All righty. Uh, we're going to go back up in red. And green was the least visible last time. No, red Red was the least visible last time. Yeah. That green one is no good for three statue miles. I don't think it's, it's visible, but it's not effective at drawing anybody's attention. Wow. OK, so now we're going up the same light, but it's red. We can see it. So it's, it's, it's Blinking and twinkling in roughly the same way as the red light on that, and they're almost indistinguishable. 
only reason I can tell them apart is because I know which one is going up and down. So it barely, barely passes the test. Barely. How's your battery? Oh yeah, this one has two LEDs on it, so I don't expect much, but I've been proven wrong, so. Actually, it seems brighter already than the other one. For sure. That's only two LEDs, so it would be magical if it actually worked. I can see it. It's actually brighter than the red light previously. Okay. That's impressive. Okay. Excellent. That's the last one. That's the uh, ARC-5. Oh, yeah. This one is bright. It's Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh, yeah. Sure. That, that one is very obviously brighter. Yeah. How do you compare this one to the second one? The brightest one that in, in the bunch that we just used? It's very close. It's probably equal to the second one or better. Same, same manufacturer, so that makes sense. Well, um, okay. I say we swap out batteries put them on the top. and put them on the top. Okay. We are testing at the top because they all pass the test. So basically now what we want to do is we want to make sure that um, they're also visible. We cheated because you're supposed to put them this way, which is the reason is we are uh, supposed to be visible to other aircraft from the top. So, but they're the brightest viewed from the top. So now we're going to see if we can actually still see them from this angle, which is the 90 degree angle, which is the, the least favorable. So we'll see if that actually works. Uh, it's not required. So if it doesn't work, then that's fine. All right. 150. 150 feet. 200. 200. We're at 200 feet now. There you go. First failure. Um, I see it with the binoculars. With the with the yeah. I mean, that's fine. That's part of the test. So, not visible from the top. And it was on top of the drone and not on the front. But that was one of the ones that we just saw that we could see from here. So, very interesting how perspective changes and visibility changes. Here's a pro tip. Don't stare at the light. It'll kill your night vision. That's the ARC-2 from Firehouse ARC-2. Okay, launching up. Here we go. Especially with cold hands. 100. 150, 200. 200. Can you see it? 60. Just barely. Can you, uh, can you? Well, I with can't. the naked eye, I can see. All right, let's, okay, so that's that's facing you. So let me turn 90 degrees to the right. Yeah, so as you change okay, orientation, I, just saw it. I can see it, but it, it's highly dependent on orientation. It's not, like right now, it's not visible. That's best so far, I think. Yeah, because you have an angle on the back. Oh, that's why. Oh, good. So point. when when he turns to the front, the angle's the other yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. So that's another ninety. That's two seventy. Two seventy, better or worse? Nothing. All right. No, hang. On. I just I just had um, it. It. So that's the problem. We have like five seconds where we can see it, and then five or six where we can. And there's a light that mimics the light almost exactly in the distance. That makes it even harder. So okay. I. I would say that if it if it's passing, this one is clo passing even closer to the other one, which I, I mean, the visibility is almost not there. All right, okay. that's fine. Yeah, a little bit of an angle. Let me do this. Let me put it in in bright mode here. Okay. See what happens here is that because the uh, the back of the drone is a little bit tilted, and what we have is it's visible from the back. So that's what they've been reporting out there. So that's an interesting thing that's good to know. Uh, kind of expected, I guess. Here, next. That's the cheapo. This is the cheapo. Okay, <laughs> launching up. I've got five lights in my eye right now. <laughs> 200. I, I, I mean, it's the same case as the last one where I can Wait. see that's up past, that's that way of thumb view. Yeah. So right there, I can see, I, I see it. So I see it once and then it fades for five or six seconds until you guys change orientation and then I can see it again. So what's going to be interesting to see is how low they are compared to where we are. Because we are, we're 200 feet AGL, but compared to their location, we're probably 400 feet. Yeah. 
So that one was a lot more difficult to see. It was very similar to the previous test. So these two tests are very similar as uh, where we can't see the aircraft, can't tell its orientation or anything unless it's actively yawing, actively moving, changing orientation so that we get some of those LEDs. At least from, from their spot. Damn, this thing is actually fairly bright for being so tiny. That's the dome. Taken off. So you should be able to see this one. Might. Well, because it's got the dome on top. Yeah. It's 150. No. Can you see it? Um, negative. 200. Okay, I'm going to turn 180 degrees. Nothing. I see nothing. Interesting, because that's the one that I would have expected because of the dome design that you'd be able to see something. I couldn't see that at all. So that, that one wasn't visible at all and I didn't see it with the binoculars, but they may have come down prior to me getting the binoculars up to actually right, look. That one wasn't very bright last. That's the one that has different lights on it. I think this one is the least bright of all of them. Spooling. All right, launching up. Yeah, 175, 180, 190. Okay, 200 feet. Can you see it? No. Now we're turning 180. The back is facing you now. I can see it through the binoculars, but it's not a visible uh, line of sight at all. Interesting. So okay. there's really only two so far that have been visible from, or barely visible from the back, the first two. So even the brightest ones that were visible from the front. So the moral of the story is if you want to see, if you want to use it to see the drone, and if you want to use it to be seen, Put them on the side. then you need two. You need one on the top, and then you need one in, in the front, yep. or in the back, or on the side. <laughs> that one, there's no way. Yeah, you guys but, <laughs> but who knows? Spooling. Wow, that was a lot of takeoffs and landings. Okay, right there, 180. No naked eye, though? No, I don't. Oh, no, definitely not. So... That was another one where you could see them with these guys, but you can't see them line of sight at all. They're just invisible. Well, this is kind of boring in terms of flying. <laughs> that's the last one. Yeah, that's the brightest. One of the brightest. I'll give you this. And this one has an interesting case, so I don't know. It may, may be visible from the back. I don't know. Damn. Yeah, that one is bright. It's pulling. Wait, what are we at? Yeah, 180 now. Yep, yep, I can see it. Wow, visible. Okay. That one is visible. Let me turn 180. Can you see it better now? This is the best one by far. I don't think yeah, I've lost it. Yeah, I can see it. Awesome. Best one by far. That's what the team said. That's the last one. I kept it for last because I actually thought this was going to be the last one. Based on the design, based on how bright it was in the studio, I'm not surprised at all. So. That's, that's my best buy right here. That's my recommendation. And you're buying American too. This is the ARC-5. Definitely the clear winner For sure. of, uh, of all of these. So, hey, it is bright. Wow. So that last one was by far the best. It was, it, you yeah, could see so it uh, regardless of them changing orientation, regardless of them moving the aircraft around. We never lost vision of it here. Uh, prior, or contrary to the previous two, which we definitely lost vision when it would turn a little bit. If we didn't have an LED facing us, it was really difficult to see. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. That, that was the one that you could actually tell was a light and not just some flicker you might be seeing. Yes. So this is Firehouse Arc 5. This is the design right here. And the reason why you can see it is because it's got a little plastic dome on the top that reflects the light, I think on the sides as well. So very, very bright from this side and also very bright from this side. So you know what we're gonna do the next thing? We're gonna go back to the studio because it's cold out here. All right, man, it was cold out there. I can tell you that we could not wait to get back in the car. So I hope you appreciated the test. This was, uh, this was actually fun, in a way fun, but also boring because all you do is you basically just take off with this thing and then uh, go up in the air and, and that's about it. So, uh, and then come back down. Uh, what I found really cool actually was on, on this drone, the light down here, 
uh, turns on as soon as you take off. So it lights up the area underneath you. When you're high enough, it turns off and then you can turn it on if you want to manually. But then when it comes back down, then it lights up the area where you can land. So I thought that was really neat. Um, in terms of the clear winner, as you can tell from the video, this one right here, the ARC-5, I had my own suspicions because uh, of the way that it performed in the uh, studio in itself. So the ARC-5 right here is definitely uh, what you want to buy. If you're going to buy anything, this is it right here. So uh, this one is $34. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on their websites. We're going to have a link down there. If you want to buy the other ones, by all means, there's links also to all of them. So. Um, the, uh, this one is 12 grams. It has the micro USB on the side. It has the ability to be turned on. It's very simple. And I think because of the design, you can see that there's a little bit of a bevel and, uh, and then it makes it clear. That bevel actually is what made it reflect and be visible from the top of the drone. So that was really cool. Now, another thing that I want to mention is, um, do you see how this is kind of curved in the back right here? And so it made it a bit more visible. I put it on top of the battery because, well, because I didn't want to have the Velcro on top of the GPS unit right here. So I have the Velcro on top of the battery right here, which I think makes it a little bit safer. The downside is you need to have Velcro on all your batteries. So uh, I had dedicated the specific one for Velcro. Velcro is cheap. You can just put it on here. And um, and, and then, like I said, I have one in the front as well uh, right here. So um, again, clear winner with this one. Another thing that we learned from all of this is the fact that uh, red and green is not that good of an idea. It's going to reduce the visibility, not as visible, not as easy to see. I would say, if you want to put more than one light, put this little guy on top and then get something simpler like this one or even this one. Quite frankly, when you get two of these and you get two of these, it's about the same price anyway. And um, and, and this one was way more visible. This is the ARC-2 from, uh, from Firehouse. So if you get that combo right here, you'll have everything you need. You can get this in different colors. So you could get a red one, you could get a green one, get the white one right here, and then you'll be all set. You'll be the most visible thing uh, up in the sky. So. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, leave your comments if you have questions. Uh, we did not test how long these things will last. Uh, the reason I didn't do this, I was going to do it originally, but um, I think all of them are going to last long enough for you to do your flights, to go through your whole set of batteries and still have enough thing. Uh, if you get to the point where you have so many batteries, just buy two of these or bring a little, um, a little pack battery pack and then you can recharge them between flights but um but yeah that's that's really all i have so um, as always subscribe like do all the things that you do love interacting with you guys and uh, we'll see you for the next test